and we have a lot of Bachelor tea to discuss, so let's just dive right into it because Jason Tardick and Dean Unglert are revealing all Bachelor in Paradise secrets and how much the contestants really get paid. Dean says to Jason on Jason's Trading Secrets podcast that the franchise offered him $400 to be on Bachelor in Paradise a day. However, when he talked to past contestants, they told him he should be considering more because he was such a popular contestant on Rachel Lindsay's season. So Dean made a counter offer at 800 and then they settled upon 600. For Dean's second season to go to Bachelor in Paradise, he wanted to step things up a bit because he got the villain edit in the previous season before. So when the franchise asked him to return a couple years later after his stunt on BIP season four, where he was the villain, um, he told him that he would return to, he would return for $20,000 an episode. Um, obviously, he knew that that was an absurd amount, so they ended up agreeing him to pay him $602, which is just $2 more than he got paid the first time he went to Bachelor in Paradise. Now, this is so interesting to me because I had no idea how much the contestants got paid to go to Paradise. I'm glad that they are making some money because they are exploiting themselves on national TV. But Avery, what do you think about Dean's negotiations? Well, first off, I have to say, I think 600 is a pretty good amount as far as like reality TV goes, because I know a lot of other shows pay way less per day. But he was very ambitious by kind of negotiating 20K after 600. <laughs> um, but it's kind of crazy how they ended up just paying him 602 just to reach like the over the 600 limit. <laughs> um, so I think it's a decent amount, but I, I like how he negotiated, but it didn't seem to go as planned. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm always about, you know, just trying to make as much money as you can, because like you said, they are exploiting themselves on TV. So might as well just make money during the process. I mean, that doesn't hurt to ask, especially because this is a huge show and they have money. They have a lot of a lot of ad revenue and a lot of eyes and viewers on this show. And it's a huge part of the ABC brand as a whole. So I think, you know, shoot your shot. If you can make money, make money. And I say I'm all about milking the process of even after the show ends or after your storyline ends, because a lot of them go on to do, you know, their podcasts and they also maybe sign deals with different streaming services and stuff. So I think if you can make a brand out of anything, especially where you first started, it's a great thing just to have that leverage and that continuity, especially if you have the audience, you might as well just kind of make money off of it and kind of continue and snowball your brand into something big. That's what a lot of reality stars do. And, you know, some of them are huge billionaires. I mean, obviously, look at the, Kardash the Kardashians and the Jenners. Um, they're usually, you know, like the big ones that usually just kind of snowballed their whole brand into this empire. So you never know, you never should sell yourself short and $2 difference. I mean, that adds up. And again, <laughs> it's, it's money. So as long as it's money at the end of the day, it's going to add up and better to ask than to just assume. So I say more power to them. Yeah, I think it was really smart of him that he asked, you know, previous Bachelor contestants like alumni what he should do because he was the most popular contestant on Rachel Lindsay's season. So it only made sense that he would get offered a little bit more money to be on Paradise because he would bring in more viewers. So I don't know if other Bachelor in Paradise contestants would maybe get jealous because he's more popular and that could cause some problems. I mean, when, when Dean was on Bachelor in Paradise for the first time, you know, there was this huge scandal between Christina and Danielle and they were both fighting for his attention. Dean was like the major storyline of that season. So I'm glad that he got more money because other contestants who go on the show literally just sit there and don't even form connections. And they're just like there to be there to like waste the days. So I'm glad that Dean is getting his coins and knows how to negotiate. And this story gets even juicier because Dean was once in talks to be the coveted role of The Bachelor as well. The franchise offered him 75K to take on the role, which he ended up never getting. While Jason, who was once in talks to become The Bachelor, was offered 100K to become The Bachelor lead, even though that role ended up going to Colton Underwood. Now, Jason is a finance guy, so he talks a little bit about the importance of talking to friends and coworkers about how much one is getting paid. Jason says it reduces the leverage we have as individuals if we don't have the information of what other people are making or how much they should be making. Jason also reveals that he will be having other reality stars from different shows on his podcast in the coming months to talk about their salaries as well. Um, we have a lot to unpack here with that, but we do have a clip from the podcast that I want to show you guys and get your reactions. So let's play that. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Send the contract over. So they sent the contract over. It was for, uh, I think it was like 75 grand okay. uh, to be the bachelor for the season. Uh, and I'm sure you probably got something similar to that, right? Not, it was not the price, but at least like 
So ours was a hundred. So I, I, mine was a hundred. Nice. And then what they did is they gave three contracts and we were all buddies. So we just compared them. So me, Colton and Blake mm -hmm. each had contracts for a hundred. Wow. That's so interesting that Jason was getting offered more than Dean was. Avery, why do you think that Jason got offered Dean more than Dean? And why do you think that, what, or do you think that um, the bachelor should be paying the hundred grand? Is that an appropriate amount of money? Yeah, I think he got offered more than Dean, probably based off of like popularity and the fact that he was more current. Um, it's been a while since, you know, Dean's season. He was on Rachel Lindsay's season and then a mm -hmm. couple seasons in Paradise. Um, and Becca's obviously was more current. So I think it is based off of popularity. And obviously Colton got the popularity the most. And that's why he was The Bachelor. But I, I mean, I don't know how this stuff works. I think 100K is a good amount. But at the same time, it is The Bachelor. And I know they have so much money. Um, but I, I think that's a solid amount. I don't, I don't know too much about this. That's why I love that they're starting discussions based off this. And I think it's mm -hmm. really smart that they're kind of comparing their offers because people like us have no idea, even if they get paid period. So I'm glad this is starting to be talked about a lot more. Exactly. I didn't even conceptualize money in this equation. I'm just here sitting and watching the show. I didn't even think about like, how much are they getting paid? Are they even getting paid? So it's really interesting to kind of, you know, see these figures come to light, especially from people who were part of the process. So I think that's very interesting. And again, to have these conversations, you know, these uncomfortable conversations about money and how much you're worth and how much mm -hmm. they're willing to pay you and to write up a contract for you to have you on their show. And I mean, I feel like it's a tricky balance because people would do this for free. So it's interesting that they're even negotiating and asking for m more money. And of course, it's important to know your worth. But ABC can save a whole bunch of money and just get people that are desperate to wanting to find love and would, of course, would love to do it on The Bachelor and they would do it for free. So again, um, there's just kind of pros and cons to all of this. And it's just really interesting to kind of, you know, be in on these conversations and kind of be a fly on the wall, especially because they're disclosing a lot of stuff that was probably, mm -hmm. you know, protected by NDAs and stuff like that. So now that the time has passed and I'm sure, you know, people are moving on and we're getting new people into this franchise, you know, they're kind of getting not phased out, but just, you know, people aren't talking about them as much. And I feel like they can finally disclose these types of details that we never really thought about. But it's really interesting to, you know, learn more about the Bachelor franchise and kind of, you know, see what operations go about, you know, in the behind closed doors and stuff like that. But I mean, again, if you can get the money, get the money. Um, I think 100K is a pretty solid amount. I think anytime it hit, hits six figures I feel like you're golden so mm -hmm. I mean I'll gladly take 100k any day so I wouldn't be <laughs> <Yeah>. complaining <laughs> yeah yeah honestly this podcast was so much tea like I was living for these discussions right. and I think 100k is a fair amount Dean getting offered 75k no 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 you're gonna be the bachelor you're gonna get 100k but we also need to take into notice that when you become the bachelor, you become the lead role. There are so many more opportunities for you with the exposure you're getting to make even more money. So yeah, they might be making 100K just by the franchise alone, but then they're going to be getting so much more money based on brand deals, articles about them, you know, press and everything else. I mean, they're going to be making a million dollars just from one season if, if you are The Bachelor. And a fun fact is that back in the day on the earlier seasons of The Bachelor, they used to pay the contestants or like the lead role, the lead Bachelor, based on how much his salary was when he was taking off of work to become The Bachelor. So now that the show is oh, a lot wow. more popular, they're obviously offering a lot more money to the leads and also, I think that they do need to get paid on Paradise. I know that the contestants don't get paid too much, if anything, but I do think they need to get paid on Paradise because they were already on the show. They're already known people. They already had exposure on TV. Now they're reality TV characters. So when they go to Paradise, they definitely deserve a check because they put in the work. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Taisha, Caitlin, and Katie, this dynamic trio on the season of The Bachelorette. I'm definitely here for the girl power. I think that they're going to be a really funny group. And that is all we have to share with you guys for now. As always, we want to hear your thoughts. So even if you missed the live, you can still tell us your thoughts. Comment below. Let us know what you guys think of everything we talked about today. Dean, Jason, Katie, um, Cassie, pretty much everyone. And don't forget to <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel, share news, ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. As always, I'm your host, Zachary Reality. And today I was joined by... Avery Grooms and Hiva Berry. You guys can check out our socials down below. Give us a follow, say hello. And that is all we have. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.